At a number 10 spot, we have the Silent Hill series. Probably the most iconic one on this list, the Silent Hill series is one of the most disturbing nightmare situations in a game. The music, the atmosphere, the story, the monsters. It seems like this game took over the horror genre and just made it its own. Silent Hill was published by Konami back in 1999. It is a psychological horror franchise and much of the game deals with the actions people take and the way they justify it using guilt, anger, or manifesting it to be something bigger. So just to make things clear, the first four games of this series were created by Japanese developers and this includes Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 3, and Silent Hill 4 The Room. Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo had various developmental groups and Team Silent was the one who developed these specific four games. At a number 9 spot we have Fatal Frame series. If you are looking for a game that implements Japanese culture, folklore with horror wrapped up in a nice story then maybe Fatal Frame is for you. Fatal Frame or Zero in Japan is a survival game horror franchise with 5 installments, 2 spin-offs, two special editions and a whole remake. These horrific games were developed by Japanese video game developers Tecmo, who has also released games like Dead or Alive, Deception or Star Force. The game has you playing as a single character walking around a haunted location looking for clues and fighting ghosts with only a camera. It's called the Camera Obscura and it's able to take pictures that normal humans can't see, kind of like a third eye to see spirits. Set in the 1980s Japan, this game takes place in Himura Mansion, where it's said that every 10 years a ritual involving a sacrifice a young girl would take place. They would do this by detaching her from all worldly needs before sending her to the afterlife. Except one year it all failed because the young girl fell in love. This caused the family to believe they had dishonored themselves and the family, in which caused each and every single one of them to take their own life away by a traditional Japanese katana. Now their souls are trapped in this mansion for you to explore. At number 8 spot we have The Evil Within. This is a game that is a very skilled reliant game in that every action and decision you take will actively change the world around you. So at times this game is pretty terrifying. The Evil Within or Cycle Break in Japan is a survival horror game developed by Tangle Gameworks and published by Bethesda Softworks. It was released in October 2014 and released virtually on every single platform including PC, PlayStation and Xbox. I'm sorry Nintendo users. The story follows a guy named Sebastian who has to navigate himself through different chapters filled with these horrifying creatures and realistic needs such as the need for resources in this game. Trust me, you need to find resources. But other than that, the real horror of this game comes from the whole atmosphere it sets in the Beacon Mental Hospital where a mass murder took place and the psychological effects you get with every decision you make. At number 7 spot we have Yamarari Night Alone. Yamorari is a puzzle solving survival horror game developed by Nippon Ichi Software. The game I will be talking about is only one game of the Yamari series. Being released in October of 2015, the game received a lot of international praise. The story follows two young girls, Yu and Haru, who are headed home before they got separated by a vicious attacker. As the two get lost, they have to navigate themselves back home, but the path they travel is much more terrifying than their usual. You will be playing as both the girls and each decision you make will impact the other girl. The way this game uses sound effects and lighting to emphasize their scares gives them a spot on this list for sure. Not to mention the unique and interesting ways to get through each of the stage of this game. This game is really worth the buy. At number 6 spot we have The Calling. I kinda threw shade at Nintendo on my last point so I had to mention one of their exclusives on this list. We have the game The Calling or Kuroki Kokushin as it is in Japan. This survival horror game was developed by Hudson Soft and released on November 19, 2009. This game is extremely under on this list and I personally think it deserves a spot for a lot of you guys to notice at least in the horror section of gaming. The game would use your Nintendo Wii controller as a telephone and would randomly ring throughout the game. On the other end would be spirits, ghosts, demons which is already scary of a concept if you ask me. Obviously the controller could also be used to interact with objects around but definitely the phone idea props to them. The game follows a group of characters exploring Mnemonic Abyss which is a place between life and death and from here they experience restless ghosts and creepy phone rings from spirits. Spirits. On the hump of our list we have Bloodborne. Created by the renowned Japanese developer from software, Bloodborne is just as hard as its counterparts Dark Soul and Elden Ring from the same developer. Except Bloodborne definitely takes its spot as one of the most terrifying games along with its extreme difficulty. Released as a PS4 exclusive back in 2015, Bloodborne follows a hunter who's in charge of cleaning up the mess that a disease has caused on the citizens of Yarnum, causing them to be these oversized, super
super powered humans, almost godlike. And yeah, lots of blood, lots and lots of blood. This gothic inspired city harbors some of the most cruel enemies ever shown in horror games along with the creepy atmosphere that follows you throughout the entirety of the game. My favorite thing about this game that sets them apart from others on this list is definitely their combat system. There are so many different weapon types that only add up to so many different combat strategies. This game allows you to go crazy and pull off combos which is always something fun to do. And this definitely beats poking and weaving around the whole time. <coughs> Dark Souls. <coughs> At number 4 spot we have Shadow Corridor. This survival indie game was created by a single man named Kazuki Joma using the infamous Unreal Engine 4. It was released as a free to play on June 21st, 2017. In the beginning you start off as a normal person walking happy across multiple old valleys of Japan. This until you get into a tunnel that transports you into a nightmare in a pure spirit away style. Inside this nightmare you have to confront a world full of apparitions, no mask and demons and creatures. As well you have to collect items to survive and get to solve the mystery behind this nightmarish world. Another great point in favor of this game is that in order to unravel all of its secrets you are going to be spending lots of hours finding hidden items, hidden rooms, collecting all special items, running against the clock to finish the stage, all sorts of things. All the way out of number 3 spot we have Siren Blood Curse. Siren Blood Curse or as it's known in Japan as Siren New Translation is a stealth based survival horror game developed by Sony's Japan Studio. It was exclusive for PlayStation so once again Xbox fans have another one of those games that will never see the light of day. The game was later released in 2008. The story begins on August 3rd 2007 and focuses on an American television crew that arrives in Japan to investigate and document the legend of Hanuda, a banished village where human sacrifice are said to have taken place 30 years prior. The atmosphere in this game is very unique as well and at a time in this game the Japanese village was stuck in a hell like time loop and would often go split screen to show the two worlds of the living and the dead. The game was a remake of the American version so it used a lot of Caucasian characters and voice actors despite its Japanese origin. This is definitely another unrated Japanese horror game on this list and if you like being sneaky and quiet in a horror game this one might be for you. At our number 2 spot we have The Corpse Party. Another one of this list created by a single person, Corpse Party was published in 1996 spring and it was made by 22 year old college student Makota Kaduan. Corpse Party is a survival horror game and adventure game that follows a group of friends performing a ritual except this would instead send them to another dimension where they would be tormented by the ghosts of other children. During the game you must be able to go through psychological and emotional screwing scenes and a story that will make you question your insanity at times. Along with a terrifying ambience, constant jump scares, unique puzzle, this game will definitely not disappoint. The reason I love this game so much is because it actually plays out like a visual novel almost. The character development and dialogue is what pushes this game to be one of the top contenders in the horror genre. And a great thing I appreciate is that they do add light moments to add relief as this game will literally have you scared the whole time you play it. At our number one spot we have the Clock Tower 3. I couldn't finish this list without adding one of the Japan's most iconic horror games Clock Tower 3. Clock Tower 3 is a survival horror game that is co-produced by both Capcom and Sunsoft and made as an exclusive for PlayStation 2. The plot follows 14 year old Alyssa as she tries to escape the menacing clock tower and the slaves inside of it. The majority of the game is played without the use of a weapon relying instead of your ability to run through or dodge foes. The game has good graphics, mood and scripting despite some repetitive mechanics and overall commercial failure. The fear comes from a general lack of ability to defend oneself and the Suing dependency on fleeing or figuring out puzzles. The pressure is to come up with a solution as soon as possible before it's too late. At number 10 spot, we have Loang Siwu. Loang Siwu, or its Javanese translation, means a thousand doors. And guess what? These guys are liars because this building doesn't have that many doors. But what they aren't lying about is the dark history associated with this place. After being completed in 1919, this building was the head office for the Dutch East Indies Railway Company. Then it transitioned into a Japanese military headquarter for World War II. So, best 
to believe this building saw countless deaths and other tragedies. Many of the supernatural activity within is attributed to what happened during World War II. It's believed that the Japanese would torture and hang people from the iron beams underneath the ceiling. And it's said by many guests who stand underneath the beams that they get touched or hear the screams of those who were tortured. At number 9 spot we have Bintaru Railway and Magari Station. Known as one of the most devastating accidents in railway history, the 1987 Bintaru train crash had two trains colliding head on due to a mere miscommunication. From the accident more than 100 lives were claimed and many many more injured. It was so bad of a crash it took first responders over two days to dig out all the bodies and people trapped under the debris. Now the train graveyard located in Mangari station where all the train metal was buried is supposedly haunted. At the dead of night locals claimed to see the ghostly apparitions of two trains going towards one another all while hearing the panic screams of those trapped inside. It is said that many pedestrians have been struck and killed after crossing these tracks and the survivors of these incidents claim they were possessed by the people of the train crash. At our number 8 spot we have Mall Clender. Back on May 15, 1998, an army of looters residing in East Jakarta had taken over the Yogyakarta department store in response to the sudden collapse of the Indonesian economy. During the time over 400 shopkeepers and visitors were stuck inside of the building in fear of being attacked if they tried to leave. But as hours went by the looters eventually burned down the four-story building with all the people still inside of it. This caused over 250 lives to perish within minutes, making one of the most devastating terrorist attacks in history. However, in the year 2000, they decided to rebuild the burnt down building into a shopping store called Clender Mall. Except many believe this mall to be haunted the moment of its construction, especially since the area claimed as many lives as it did. Workers at the mall report that they still find the charred remains of some who were burnt alive with fingers and other small body parts scattered around the mall. As well, the majority of workers claimed to be in a trance-like state at least once when working, which they all blamed it on the tortured ghosts trapped in the building. At number 7 spot, we have the Ghost Palace Hotel. As the name suggests, well you already know what the name suggests, Ghost. Ooh. So as you can see, this hotel lies abandoned and looks creepy as is. The variations of the story goes from a developer being cursed due to his corrupt practices or that one night all workers and guests suddenly disappeared out of thin air. The most believable story is that of Tommy Sahardo, who was the son of a former Indonesian president. He went on to construct this hotel back in the early 1990s until he was sent to prison in 2002 which caused all construction to completely cease. Now after countless years of being completely abandoned, many believe this place is as scary as it looks. Located in the mountains of Bedugal, the ghost palace is heavily guarded, but it's said that you can enter if you pay 10,000 rupees for a ticket. Now if you enter this abandoned place, people report feeling a strong sense of loneliness even when they're with a group. As well, others report seeing the ghosts of people working, which are said to be those who pass away during the construction of this building. I mean, seeing one person in an abandoned place is enough for me to be walking straight back home. At number 6 spot, we have the Octopus House. Located on Pastor Road lies this unusual house that can be described only as having a large octopus octopus on the roof, hence the name Octopus House. Although much is unknown about this now abandoned house, it is said that it was built back in the 1990s with sources claiming the octopus started off as a bright pink opposed to the fading black color it has today. Other than the creepiness just given from looking at the house, it is said that the house is used by the Church of Satan. Many stories would have guests coming in the house completely normal, but as they leave, they would leave sick with bruises and scratches to accompany that. In the humble list were the Manara Seda. The Manara Seda or the Seda Tower is a 28 story abandoned building in Kawang, East Jakarta. The building is most popular for its Roman architecture inspiration with Roman pillars and statues being imported directly from Italy. It was completed in 1998 but after ownership and financial issues it became abandoned in 2007. But that was far from the end of this building's story. Now the decaying building has quite a few ghosts stuck inside. For example when the building shut down people began to notice that the rooms of the building were lighting up despite the fact that the local power company cut out all power to the building. The reports were in the hundreds with some even claiming that they saw a person standing in one of these lit up rooms. The basement of this building is supposedly the most haunted with no security guard willing to walk this area even when it was open. Reports say that many encounter an unseen figure which in some cases will attack unsuspecting victims tugging their hair and their clothes. At number 4 spot we have the Tugu complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who were in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in the 1940s these three schools were used as concentration camps by the opposing Japanese
Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connected each school with one another along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere on the area. And another strange occurrence in this building is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each building. And the odd thing about that is that workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible at a number three spot over the Ankol Bridge. Although it is known as a waterside creation area, Ankol is said to contain one of Jakarta's most tragic and dangerous spirits. The ghost that haunts Ankol's Goyang Bridge is said to be that of a beautiful young woman named Siti Arya, who was kidnapped and murdered in the early 1800s after she rejected the advances of a powerful old man. Legend says that her body was left in the rice field right by where the Goyang Bridge stands now. Now referred to as the sweetheart of Ankol Bridge, Siti's ghost, which is also sometimes called Mariam, is said to appear on the bridge at night wearing a white dress or sometimes a black kabaya. The urban legend about her also says that she caused many several drivers going past the bridge to get into fatal accidents. The story of Ankol Bridge is so famous that it became made into several movies as well as a TV show. At number two spot, we have the Casablanca Tunnel. This is considered to be Indonesia's most haunted tunnel and it is located in Busuki Ramhat Street near the Kunian area and although there is nothing documented about this bridge, it is believed to be built sometime in the 1980s. The tunnel's location used to be a graveyard, so during construction they plan to relocate it but did so improperly. It said that this caused many of the spirits to come out of their eternal rest. Although other tunnels have had their own fair share of accidents, the ones that happen in the Casablanca tunnel are quite different. Drivers who were caught in accidents all claim seeing a woman walking across the street causing them to crash in the first place. The woman is known as a red robe lady and as the name suggests she would be seen walking the tunnel in her red robe. It is said that this is the ghost of a woman whose grave was disturbed and has been there ever since. At a number one spot we are the Drew Prude Cemetery. Of course cemeteries make excellent haunted locations, but Drew Prude Cemetery next to Kamang is possibly the most well known haunted graveyard in Jakarta. It is said to be haunted by the spirit of a decapitated pastor who walks around holding his head in his hands and is frequently followed by a giant black dog. He allegedly went hunting for his own grave which in reality is in another cemetery. The priest is not the only ghost in Drew Perut, although he is the most well known. It's stated that if you're with an odd number group of individuals on Friday nights, you have the best chance of running into him. Apparently nighttime and visitors to the cemetery are quite common and there are even reports that the groundskeeper will take you on tour for a small fee. Starting off this countdown at number 10, Tag. The opening scene of Tag is one of the most shockingly horrific moments in Japanese cinema and is a perfect setup for the absolute carnage and confusion that follows. A young girl called Mitsuko finds herself battling between alternate realities, each with a unique set of horrors she must face. There is little to no explanation as the audience gets thrusted into a never ending spiral of danger alongside Mitsuko, which makes the movie a heart racing watch. Despite the endless world of horror scene and tag, it is the true reality revealed at the very end that is the most terrifying. Now if this movie name sounds familiar, it might be because the movie trended on TikTok around when it came out with the famously terrifying bus scene. We can unfortunately only show a short clip because it's from a movie, but does that scene not just give you goosebumps? Like holy, talk about intense. Now at number 9, The Ghost of the Hunchback. Hajime Sato's 1965 Toei movie Hayden Samushi Atoko goes by several names in the West. The Ghost of the Hunchback, House of Terrors, and Satan's Pit. Regardless, they are all the same terrifying movie. The Ghost of the Hunchback is about a hunchbacked caretaker who presides over a forlorn mansion inhabited by the ghost of his previous masters. An unbelieving trio, a doctor, his assistant, and his niece fail to heed the caretaker's warnings and are slaughtered horribly by the jealous occupants. Now moving on to number eight, The Curse. Fans of the found footage style horror need to look no further than Nori or The Curse. The film opens with an introduction to paranormal investigator Masafumi Kobayashi, who has disappeared during the process of making a documentary titled The Curse. The documentary then begins to play as viewers are left to uncover the secrets he left behind. Seemingly disconnected mysteries that involve strange and creepy events are tied together by the discovery of an old ritual that summons a demon named Kagutaba. Noroi is said to be disturbingly realistic, which makes it all the more terrifying. Terrifying. I found out the movie is free to watch on YouTube, but that's if you dare to watch this horrifying film. But it can also be found with better quality on Shudder. 
Now at number seven, House. The bizarre horror that is House is a hyperactive fever dream that takes place in the most deranged, creepy, haunted house to ever grace the big screen. Nobuhiko Obayashi's twisted fairy tale tells the story of seven schoolgirls on a summer trip to an aunt's remote estate. The fantasy-like beginning takes a turn so deformed and uncanny that it's difficult to adequately describe. House is overflown with unbelievable scenes, people say. The scenes that take place in the haunted house are as gruesome, but they are just as exciting to watch. The movie came out in 1977. And nowadays, watching older horror movies don't really seem that scary because of all the CGI and everything we have now, but after seeing a five second clip of this movie, you're sure to have goosebumps. This movie is one of the most inventive and colorful horror movies to ever exist and truly must be seen to be believed. <laughs> Now at number six, Sadeko versus Keiko. Yes, the vengeful ghosts of Ring and the Grudge are iconic, but if you've ever wondered which ghost is stronger, well, here's a movie that brings them together for the ultimate face-off and answers just that. We follow Natsumi, a woman who watches Sadeko's cursed videotape and realizes it's only a matter of time before Sadeko kills her. She tries to save herself by pinning Sadeko against Keiko, a malevolent spirit who resides in a haunted house, hoping they may kill each other and end the curse. The film takes the best parts of the two movies, antagonists, and blends them together, capturing the dread and hostility perfectly. And funny enough, the movie seems very similar to Ring. Well, based on the trailer, that is, because I haven't seen the movie, but after seeing the spooky trailer, I might just have to give it a watch. It's creepy and fun and totally worth the watch, and the movie can be found on Amazon Prime, YouTube, and Shudder. <laughs> Halfway at number five, Uzumaki. Based on the horror mangaka Junji Ito's spine-chilling manga of the same name, this film's concept is just as eccentric as it is creepy. It's about a cursed town whose inhabitants are haunted by ominous spirals that drive the townspeople mad, and sometimes to the point where they take their own life. A protagonist race to break the curse, but can it really be stopped? The strengths here are the ghastly body horror, the lack of standard backstory, lending to the sense of hopelessness, and the nightmarish, surreal imagery. A man crawls into a washing machine, people turn into snails, and your fingertips have spirals. Even the sky is cursed with spiral-like clouds. This is certainly not a town I'd personally want to live in, and based on the trailer, it looks very freaky and cryptic looking. <laughs> At number four, Dark Water. This is a classic that forever remains underrated and one of people's personal favorites. Yoshimi is a single mother in the midst of a divorce. To prove she is able to take care of her daughter, she moves the pair into an old rundown apartment building where the haunting horrors begin. A dripping leak forms on the ceiling, black hair appears in the tap water, and an extremely creepy child ghost. It's chilling with a touching mother-daughter relationship at its heart, but don't let that fool you because this movie is truly terrifying. And fun fact, this is based on a novel by Koju Suzuki, who is also the author of the Ring novels, and was directed by Haido Nakata, who also directed the unbelievably famous and scary movie Ring. Some even say it's Japan's saddest horror movie. Here at number three, Corpse Party. The movie Corpse Party is based on the horror video game series of the same name. There's also an anime and manga too. It's set in a haunted school and is incredibly dark and blood curdling, which is right up the alley for most big horror fans. It has everything, blood, gore, mystery, and ghosts. A group of high school students perform our charm called Sachiko Ever After to ensure they'll remain friends forever. Instead, they find themselves transported to a haunted elementary school with resentful spirits and Sachiko herself, who's actually the psychopathic ghost of a little girl in a red dress. There's also an equally freaky sequel called Corpse Party Book of Shadows. <laughs> Now coming in at number two, Ring Yu. Ring Yu is a cult horror film of legendary status. Its prominence as one of the best horror films to come from Japan has not wavered over for more than two decades since its release. Ring Yu subjects viewers to a deep-seated psychological tact that leaves them with a mysterious and lasting sense of doom. The story itself is deceptively unassuming. Watch a cursed videotape and die a gruesome death seven days later. It's a masterful way director Hideo Nakata cloaks Ring Yu in growing dread that makes it a superior film. The frightening jump cuts become implanted in your mind, and the metallic screeching will ring in your ears for days after watching. Of course this one is good, but for me, I really like the newer remakes of Ring, but still, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend this one. Now coming in number one, The Grudge. It's impossible to talk about Japanese horror movies without mentioning Juon or The Grudge. The movie is disconnecting thanks to its non-linear narrative, but viewers can expect to encounter two terrifying restless spirits ready to torment anyone that enters their home. Everything about the film is sure to inflict sheer terror. The Grudge draws on horrors from both the real and paranormal 
paranormal since the terrible crimes committed become the cause of the restlessly horrifying supernatural events. The creeping sense of a foreboding that builds throughout the movie lingers well after watching. I chose to put this at number one because I'm a big horror fan, but most horror movies don't actually scare me. But this one actually kept me up at night. I swear all I could hear when I tried to fall asleep was that creepy noise. At number 10 spot, we have crisper babies. Imagine you could customize yourself however you like, including your height, your skin color, your voice, and maybe testosterone for men. Well, this is what Chinese researcher Ho Zhenku did. In 2018, the Chinese researcher made the world's first gene-edited baby using CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR was a new technology that allowed for DNA editing. Specifically, Ho was trying to encode HIV co-receptor with the goal of making a set of baby twins resistant to the virus. Except this form of gene editing is more scary than that. Scientists say that it can be used for virtually any other modification. At our number 9 spot, we have the social credit system. In 2014, China released a renowned social credit system. The one most of us have heard about, you know, on TikTok, YouTube, everywhere has talked about it. But many of us don't understand how it works. It basically is a system that works with AI, CCTV, surveillance footage, and listening devices that either rewards you or takes away points. In a way, these points decide how valuable you are as a person in the society. The fear of having a low social credit score score is nationwide because you may be put up on a massive billboard for everyone to see and mock. Examples of how you can increase your social credit score include talk about good about the Chinese government on social media, donating to charity, helping people around your community, teaching Chinese, basically anything that's good or good for China. To lose points, you can drive over the speed limits, litter around, play your music a little bit too loud, or even spending money on something that they deem is dumb purchases. And punishments for having low scores could mean bans from public transit, slowed down Wi-Fi, or even banned from any luxurious restaurants or hotels. The fact that they implemented the Black Mirror episode into real life is scary enough, but the fact that the government is constantly stalking and judging you is even more terrifying. At a number 8 spot, we have Super Drones. To increase their military presence in the open waters, China has unveiled a mothership named the Zuhei Yun, which carries over 50 advanced unmanned drones. So basically, it's an unmanned boat carrying autonomous drones, so no human is on board, and yet the ship is capable of destruction on a different level. Each drone is very intelligent. Each one knows what the other one is doing, so if these drones decide to attack a human, then all of the other drones would attack too. Warfare without the use of human soldiers is horrible. These drones can move at the speeds no human can reach. They can hit and detect at ranges no human could ever possibly think about. And they're able to be made like, just like that. Just imagine if they decide to put their entire funding on these drones and made a complete army. Elon said this about the situation. You make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed right now. At our number seven spot, we have the artificial sun. Located at the Institute of Plasma Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Hefei, China, lies the sun. But Andrew, the sun is in outer space, not in China. Sorry, my bad, the artificial sun. Sounds pretty terrifying on the surface. Like just imagine how hot the sun is and how much power is contained within that. Fortunately, their purpose was for something else well needed in the future, and that is energy. There is no question we're running out of fossil fuels and all the other methods we have tried are just not sustainable over long periods of time. China then created the sun to unlock clean and limitless energy. Then in this year, they were able to reach a record high of 126 million degrees Fahrenheit at its core. And for those who don't know, that's five times hotter than the sun. They needed this core so hot because this intense pressure and the high temperature make atomic nuclei fuse together which creates new elements or energy. Except in this case, this sun could make limitless energy. At number 6 Paul, we have AI supremacy. China has been leading the world in the development of artificial intelligence for years now. China has also made significant headway in developing practical applications of AI. In particular, the country is making major strides in self-driving cars, facial recognition and voice recognition, especially used with their social credit system that I mentioned above. But should we be worried? Yes and no. 
AI is good for its various uses, but in the hands of the wrong people, AI could mean the end of our civilization. And in more scary news, according to the Telegraph, the Institute of Artificial Intelligence at HIFI, Comprehensive National Science Center created an AI program that could allegedly analyze brain waves and facial expressions to gauge whether a person is loyal to the Chinese Communist Party, basically claiming that it could read our minds. Right in the hump of our list, we have supersonic missiles. China has the second largest budget on their military, so best know they're chasing USA in the arms race especially in the missile arms race with the recent developments of a hypersonic missile. For those who don't know, hypersonic missiles are these missiles that can travel between 5 to 25 times the speed of sound, which makes them increasingly hard to hit, along with the fact that they can operate in a different region of the atmosphere. To put it in perspective, slower subsonic missiles travel a bit lower and intercontinental ballistic missiles are a bit higher, which makes these guys right in the middle region where many countries don't have the capability to detect. This summer, China has had claimed that they sent hypersonic missiles out and it went around the world. The scary thing is, is that Russia has claimed their hypersonic missiles are able to carry nukes around the world, and China is only growing their nuclear arsenal as we speak, with many estimating that they would have about a thousand warheads by the end of the decade. At number four spot, we have facial recognition. I elaborate about this on the past points, but I want to show you guys just how scary facial recognition software is. At any given time, China's CCTV surveillance cameras can detect a person, who they are, what family they came from, what crimes they committed, what they do for work, and obviously their social credit score. China's facial recognition system logs literally every single Chinese citizen, and they have a population of 1.4 billion people, meaning that database is probably massive. China has also been accused of using this to commit the atrocities done against the Muslims in the country. They did this by using the same AI to locate Muslims within the crowds and later approach them for questioning. Being watched by the government on all your action definitely affects the behavior of a human. So in a way, this technology is controlling the population to act a certain way deemed appropriate by the Chinese government. Guess wearing hyper-realistic mask is the new thing to do in China. All the way at a number three spot, we have an EMP. We mentioned hypersonic missiles in my last points, but they also have the capability to carry EMPs. EMPs or electromagnetic pulse is an intense electric burst that damages electronics over a given area. It acts like a giant magnet breaking everything electronic along its path. This would mean a complete shutdown of power grids and it can even corrupt the data inside of hard drives, which is detrimental if used on government buildings and areas. Basically, this could cause cities to be in complete darkness. Although it doesn't do anything to humans directly, the issue is much bigger than that. Have you ever spent a day without internet or power? How many issues did you have initially? Now imagine that at a larger scale where your government is in complete darkness as well. Sounds like a huge threat. At number two spot, we have biological warfare. Many have claimed that the coronavirus originating from Wuhan, China was actually a biological weapon they released to cause global panic. Allegedly, Chinese military scientists were already looking in 2015 how to create a weaponized biological weapon based on documents obtained by the US State Department. Although China declined any sort of allegations towards releasing COVID on purpose, it's widely known that China is notorious for lying and hiding everything not from just the world, but their own citizens. After seeing how the world reacted to the pandemic, biological warfare seems like the best way to control citizens and cause international panic. So whatever China did, it worked. At number one spot, we have stronger military planes. As I mentioned earlier, China is advancing their military very, very quickly after pouring in more and more money every single year. One of their military advancements include the J-20 fighter jet, and it was made with a purpose to combat the American fighter plane, the F-22 Raptor. Notorious for its stealth, speed, and agility, the J-20 is capable of reaching speeds up to to 2,000 kilometers per hour, but they are not known for the speed. Instead, the Chinese government emphasized the stealth component, making it an effective long-range interceptor. They have currently built an arsenal of around 200 of them, which are all functional and ready for a battle. General Wilsbash discussed and praised another one of Chinese planes named the KJ-500, mentioning their features of long-range air-to-air missiles and how that greatly changes the playing field in the air. Starting off this countdown at number 10, Mahandi Per Balaji Temple. This is perhaps the only temple in the country where live exorcism are performed on people to free their bodies of the spirit controlling their actions. The spooky ambiance of this temple in Rajasthan makes it one creepy place of worship to visit and is not for the faint-hearted. The temple is dedicated to Hanuman and he is believed to be a protector who can ward off evil spirits. A visit here will surely spook you out from everything that goes on inside it. You will find people who are believed to be possessed chained in a chamber. Some are being beaten up by a pundit to free the evil spirit. Or there are even people who can pour boiling water on themselves without feeling a thing. There are certain rules visitors need to follow when they come here. They cannot touch anyone and have to offer black balls into the fire. They also cannot take back any gifts or look back once they leave the premises. 
Here's also a video of a supposed exorcism taking place at the temple, but I want to let you know first that I personally found it disturbing, so be warned. <laughs> Now at number 9, Hazrat Sayyid Ali, Mira Dattar Darga. This temple is said to be where people chain themselves to the walls here to get rid of evil spirits. Located in a fort-like structure in Anava village, this Darga has been visited by women who are mentally affected, or possessed according to some people, for ages. People come here to drive evil spirits away, and there's consequently a lot of strange things that go on at the place. Local people warn others to not spend much time in that specific room where affected people are being helped by a religious master to remove evil spirits from the body Body as the furious spirit might try to possess you while leaving that body. People from all religions, caste, and creed are welcome, however I don't know if you want to visit. Now at number 8, Sri Kestra Gondapur, Dattatriya Temple. This temple is in the Gulbarga district of Karnataka state in India. It is around 45 kilometers from the district headquarters of Galbarga. Karnakara state road transportation buses are there from Galbarga to Ganagapur for every one or one and a half hours. This temple is in Gangapur and is one of the most bizarre, some say. At Dattatriya Temple, people are believed to be possessed, gathering inside on new moon and full moon days. They then hurl abuses at the gods. This is believed to free their body of the evil spirit in them. But not just this, people also climb on the walls and rampants of the temple and scream from there. Now coming in at number 7, Nizamuddin Darga. It's said that no wonder if Delhi is serving as the capital because it is not only the politics, glorious history, majestic monuments, and Delhi tourism for which the place is famous. When it comes to devotion and beliefs, you can see there is a place named Nizamuddin Darga, which has its own significance. It is not only the prominent Muslim shrines, but is also a place where one can rid away the evil spirits. The Darga is visited by thousands of devotees every week during the year. People from all religious beliefs visit this place to feel the true Sufi tradition. You can hear the shrieks and screams from a deserted room on the premises. It is said that a priest performs an exorcism in this one room. When you break away from the crowded and tourist infested part of Darga, you may be able to find this freaky room here dedicated to the ridding of evil spirits. Now at number 6, Shandi Devi Temple. Shandi Devi is believed to be a violent form of the goddess, and this temple is said to be housing her. People who come to this temple during Navatri are believed to be possessed by this form of the Devi as that time the spirit is most powerful. On other days, it's said that people who are possessed come here to rid of the evil spirit. However, it is unclear whether it works to get rid of the spirit or not. This is definitely a place I would not want to step foot into, even if I went on a trip to India. Yeah, we are going up uh, to see Chandi Mandir. Hopefully, it's better than what we be in the temple before. What a Mansa Devi temple. What is Chandi Mandir? It's, 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 I don't know, it's a goddess of sacrifice or something that would I understand from the name Chandi Mandir. Mm -hmm. It's a um, killer of the evil. Halfway number 5, Sant Sabir Shah Dagra. This one is quite spine chilling, so I suggest you get ready for it. The theories of this temple is that people say men chain themselves to the walls in order to cure themselves. Of what you may ask? Well, it's not exactly said, but it suggests that it's to rid themselves of evil spirits possessing their bodies. Now what I want to know is why there are so many temples dedicated to rid spirits from people's bodies. Like is this a common thing that happens on the daily in India? Let me know. This other destination is for those looking for a cure to demonic possession. This is a place considered by many to be the most far out. It is a scary, unnerving place filled to the brim with people thought to be in control of a deviant spirit. Here you'll see women offering prayers in a trance-like otherworldly state, while young men in chains attached to the wall wait for their own cures. Now at number 4, Harsu Bram Temple. The story of this temple in Bihar is that it was built for a Baharian man who wanted to get worshipped by the people. It's said that his soul still roams here and people come here to pray to him to get rid of the spirit that is possessing their body. The temple is pretty discreet and you'll have to ask the locals to take you there in order to find it. But that's even if you want to go there, which I personally wouldn't, but that's just me. But if you do go, it's recommended to ask for stories of people getting possessed and cured at this temple. Now at number 3, Kadungular Bagadathi Temple. The earthly abode of goddess Badrakali, a gentler reincarnation of goddess Kali, the Kadungular Bagadathi Temple witnesses a bizarre seven-day festival celebrated annually, the Baharani Festival. Men and women wearing red clothes are carrying swords, swarm this Indian temple, running around in a trance-like state. They hit their head with the sword, blood pours freely, and they enter the temple hurling choice abuses and singing lewd songs about the devil. Offerings are not made in the general fashion, instead they are thrown at the statue of the goddess, and the temple rafters are
are hit repeatedly with sticks. The temple is shut down for seven days after the festival, admittedly to clean the blood stains. Now at number two, Kamakya Devi Temple. Preached atop the Nalchal Hill in, in Guwahati, Assam resigns the Ma Kamakya Devi Temple, one of the most famous temples in India. The temple does not have a sculpture to worship, however, what it does have is the Yoni the wife of Lord Shiva, covered with a red silk sari. Every year during moon sun, the goddess menstruates, and the temple is closed down for three days. It is also when the Tantric Fertility Festival, or Ambubachi Mela, is celebrated here, till the fourth day when the temple reopens. It is also said that the underground spring that flows through the sanctum of the temple turns red on these three days. Devotees are offered a piece of red cloth used to cover the stone yoni during the days of menstruation as a prasad. Now coming in at number one, Devji Maharaj Mindir. You know, there's something spooky about a temple when it hosts a boot mela every year. Yes, Devji Maharaj is famous, or should I say infamous, for this ghost fair it conducts annually. This fair is on a full moon night and people who are believed to be possessed come to the temple and get themselves rid of these spirits. You can see Bhavas hitting people with brooms to get the spirit off them. Some even claim to see spirits around or feel there is something strange in the temple. The spookiest bit is when people try to rid themselves of the spirit by lighting campor on their palms, which is a powder that originally came from the bark and wood of the campor tree and is extremely flammable. You know there is something spooky about a temple when it hosts a booth mela every year. You can see Babas hitting people with brooms to get the spirit of them. Some even claim to see spirits around or feel there is something strange in the temple.